Gonna hit start record and say hello everyone and welcome back to To Be Released. I'm here with Zenrot. Hello. And it's been a whole, I think, three weeks. It's been a very long time. <laughs> it's been a very long time. So many things have changed. You won a, you won a Teppin tournament while we were gone. <laughs> you won, like, the whole shebang. On the uh, November <laughs> Ambassador Tournament. That's crazy. Since we, were, I didn't do anything, by the way. So there's no accomplishments I did on the feet of <laughs> of doing that. I just wanted to bring this up because it's still kind of amazing. Um, it's still great that when it showed like everyone's accolades, because you're because you were so new to, I guess, in theory, that scene. All they had for you was like number one Doctor Stone fan in North America. Yeah, it was, uh, it, what was it? It was, um, I got in third in the October tournament, so that was on there. And then the next one, they put the number one Dr. Stone fan in America. <laughs> and everyone else had, like, stuff like, oh, they, this guy was in Hearthstone, he did this, he did that. And yours was literally third place, Deppin loves Dr. Stone. And I won. <laughs> so. That's right, because no one expects the underdog. You were you just came in there. You're like uh, if Gamer B had actually won that one time in Evo instead of losing at the end. Nobody uh, nobody expects the Doctor Stone fan. Exactly, they underestimate him, just like Doctor Stone. That's why you should check out Doctor Stone. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> now- should. Best manga running right now. Yes, and then also while you're supporting Doctor Stone, you should remember to support. Of course, I'm back. Uh, my uncle came back. into the room because I have to. I record in his room because my life is a shambles and <laughs> everything's going great. And, and it's funny, right? When I was about to say, you should also support me by leaving a like on this video. <laughs> and you cut out right. In. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was funny. as is tradition. Oh god! Well, I also have to freaking edit that out. It's fine. Whatever. We're here for 2B release, and now let's get into the cooler business, because that's what we promised all those uh, weeks ago. All right. So up on the big boy scale, we got Cooler. Uh, his name is Unquailed Ultimate Power, which feels kind of redundant when you already have ultimate power. Does it? Un- unequaled. I'm dumb. I, apparently, I can't read. <laughs> I looked like, at... I looked at unequaled and I'm like, I've never seen that word before. <laughs> I guess that's unquailed. I don't know what the fuck this There are no quails in Cooler's attacks. Zero quails. That's why uh, he eventually lost to Goku, is that he found a quail. And Cooler Goku having... The one quail. Cooler <laughs> and, didn't have it. And Cooler, upon seeing a quail for the first time in his life, said, what the fuck is that? And he immediately lost. <laughs> that's how Cooler got <laughs> taken down. <laughs> Uh, he is the leader skill for Conquest of Terror and Transformation Boost. Three key, one hundred thirty percent attack and defense. One hundred dis- no, uh, one hundred thirty percent eight HP, and then attack and defense one hundred seventy percent. Sorry, sometimes I don't understand why they do this. By the way, they should really just just to make it easier for me. They should just do it across the board, one number. <laughs> it's really a pain yeah, in the ass. Moving it around, yeah. Uh, they should really think of us. Um, his passive skill is called Torture to Death, which is really funny. I didn't realize that's what it was. Uh, attack and defense 100%. Transformation boost category allies. Key plus 2 and attack and defense 30% when facing only one enemy. Uh, conquest of Terror category allies. Key plus 2 attack and defense 50% when facing two or more enemies. And then he has an active skill where he transforms if there is a pure Saiyan or hybrid Saiyans category enemy starting from the third turn from the start of battle or when facing only one enemy starting from the sixth turn from the start of battle once only and then when he transforms he turns into final form cooler um where his key is plus three attack and defense 180 percent launches an additional attack that has a medium chance of becoming a super attack performs a critical hit when there is a pure saiyan or hybrid saiyan category enemy and that is just permanent if he's ever fighting one of them he is non-stop critting his link skills are Strongest Clan in Space, Thirst for Conquest, Big Bad Bosses, Brutal Beatdown, Metamorphosis, Universe Most Malevolent, Fierce Battle, and his category is Movie Bosses, Transformation Boost, Wicked Bloodline, Conquest of Terror, and Target Goku, which is something they added for Android 13 specifically. Alright. There you go. And that is Final Form Cooler. Um, 
we should start off by saying that he has maybe some of the best animations out there. It's insanely good. Yeah, his animation is... I don't want to say the best one, because I'm sure there's ones I'm forgetting off the top of my head, but mm-hmm. it's up there, for sure. For sure. It's so good, they put in a 3D model of Cooler to make it like as anime accurate as possible, which I think is the only one that's done that so far. Uh, just because he... uh, yeah, I think so. That's right. Yeah, he... yeah. It's really good. Yeah, it's because really cause they do a full like um uh like Michael Bay 360 shot around <laughs> Cooler in the beginning and which like, are... the whole spin into the backhand punch. Oh, it's good. It's so good. The only bad thing about it is the fact that it keeps going back to old Dokkan sprites, which, you know, fair enough. <laughs> like they can't I guess they can't improve that. That's the one it's just him wail on a dokkan sprite though because it's like it looks like he's beating up a cardboard cutout yeah it's really funny when it's like one of those ones where it's like three characters like if he's beating up the gt trio like he's punching three people (laughs) with one fist oh it's really funny um He's got that. I think the, the past his active his active skill is maybe it's not um it's not it's not it, I think it's fair enough where for most of the time you're mainly fighting uh Saiyans and half Saiyans anyway. And if you're not fighting one of them, then six turns is enough. Usually you're done anyway, so who cares? Yeah. But it's, if, if it has to be an opponent, a Saiyan opponent's a good one to have because they're every character in Dragon Ball, so it's like yeah. It's like, oh, it's like it, it it makes sense because like literally when you look at stuff like the um what is that called? Would it was for cell where like you had to fight a whole bunch of enemies. Like half those enemies were Gohan and Goku. <laughs> like they had yep. Yam- Yamcha, Tien bosses, whatever, but eventually it was just like, now you fight Goku, now you fight Gohan, <laughs> now you fight Gohan again. <laughs> and I mean that's just how it is. So you can't you stuff anymore without it just being saiyans all the time yeah. i think people should be thankful then if you do you get android 13 and nobody pulls yes like be thankful that it was not like only when fighting goku or gohan with icarus <laughs> like like that's the only time <laughs> yeah it, it definitely could have been more only when fighting stretchy arms piccolo icarus gohan or goku but not a super saiyan <laughs> Exactly. If he turns Super Saiyan, he actually G transforms. That's the the other half of his uh, <laughs> passive. Oh, if it was actually super accurate, actually, if you ever fight a Super Saiyan uh, Goku, you just take like two X damage. <laughs> so it's super easy to die by them. Oh, that'd be great if there was like it a special be a reason to bring healing items nowadays. It would be. I forget. Cooler is not the one who got um punched into the sun that was broly right oh cooler did oh okay cooler it was and cooler. Broly got blasted into the sun they both did okay so i was gonna say imagine like if so he, obviously he has a 2x effect where if he fights a super saiyan he takes more damage but if you lose to a super saiyan you get a special animation where it's literally him getting blasted into the sun yeah, i remember he throws the death ball at goku and goku catches it and shoots it back at him and it launches it into the fucking sun Ah, yes. More. I wish Goku killed all his enemies by launching them into the sun. And then I think uh, I think Broly gets blasted into the sun uh, by the family Kamehameha. Yes. And Cooler actually gets to come back. The Broly that comes back from being blasted into the sun is technically a science experiment, so that's, that's not the true Broly. True. Cooler's head somehow survives the sun? Yes, because his the head is the coolest part of him, so he was able to survive the di- the violent sun. To offset the heat from the sun. Exactly, this is all canon as far as I'm concerned. That also proves Cooler stronger than Broly, because Cooler could survive the sun. Broly did not survive the sun. I'm willing to sign off on that. Yeah, uh, yeah, and this unit is basically what you would want out of a unit he has fantastic um everything about him is good his animations are good it's hard to even say anything about him is bad (laughs) he's really good yeah like even in his untransformed state um he's one of those units that you could also use with the preform because his preform is a category supporter so you can actually have one transformed and the other one do um support if that's how you like to play if you're not like someone who wants to go no i want double coolers equal double death (laughs) if you're someone who's like i want to give someone else a shot you can totally do that and it's perfectly fine um 
so yeah, that's the unit. What do you, how are you yeah. feeling on the big boy scale for uh, this this giant boy? Uh, I'm gonna give him five out of five. He would break the scale if he actually got launched into the sun, but because he doesn't, he cannot break the scale. Hmm. You've put up a very good point, so I'm gonna have to agree and say five out of five. Uh, we will amend this at any point if they decide to throw cooler into the sun. <laughs> If they create an animation where he gets thrown into the sun, I will come back and change my rating. But until such a time, he cannot break the scale. Okay, imagine a LR final form cooler that after you take enough damage, you activate its active skill and he gets thrown into the sun. Well, that's how that's how he transforms into metal cooler. That's his animation. He gets thrown into the fucking sun and then he then the big Getty star pulls him out and he comes yeah. back as metal cooler. A fucking Goku comes out of nowhere. It's not even the enemy you're fighting and it blasts <laughs> him into the sun. Oh, that'd be so good. Especially with the fantastic animations now. I would I would pull for that unit like crazy. It would probably bankrupt Goresh if that actually ever came out. Because oh, it God, sounds yeah, Goresh would never recover. Never recover again. All right, that's the big boy for this time. Uh, now let's go on to some questions. These questions have been... Let me tell you, some of these questions, one specifically, we already know the answer to, so... Um, oh, damn it, did I accidentally... I accidentally went back to my... I, I looked at my, tw- my... My brother sent me a reply that says, Yeehaw, I love jelly beans. You can take whatever that means <laughs> for why he <laughs> sent me that. Um... <laughs> All right, let's go into the questions again. If you want to ask questions, oh, you know what? There's totally YouTube questions. Zen stall while I look at the YouTube questions. Oh God. Okay. Uh, so everybody, uh, you should play King of Fighters All Stars if you haven't played that because it's really good and it's fun. And uh, there's a Tekken crossover right now. If you guys like Tekken, I know a lot of people like Tekken for some reason. I'm not a huge Tekken guy, but uh, <laughs> the characters are really good and they're really broken. So you should try to get them uh, because they're really, really, really too good. Uh, King of Fighters All-Stars does this thing where they, for some reason, instead of like releasing the game with all the stuff that's in the Japanese version already, they released it with just the like launch stuff. And then they were like, okay, we're just going to release Japanese banners at the same time. So <laughs> we keep getting all these super overpowered units in, like, that are coming out in Japan too. And they're like, fuck it, who cares? It's like, um, what other game does that? But it's like uh, Brave Exvius, where Brave Exvius would release, like, Sora. But he, they would release it sooner than Japan, so they would nerf him. And then once the meta caught up to where Japan was, they would take the nerfs away. Uh, and this is not like that. They literally just... Drop the, the, hot, the hot JP release. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, like, it's uh... way too good. Like when Dokkan does it and they're like invalidate all the future content <laughs> that they have not yet released. Correct. Like everyone on Reddit is like, I don't know why they would they did this because now if you pull all the Tekken characters, you just never have to pull again for like a year. That sounds great. Because all the characters that are going to come out after this are not as good. It really shows the fucked up uh, side of us players who are gotcha people who are like, why would they release this early? There's no reason for me to pull for an entire year when it's like... There's no uh, reason for me to get <laughs> swindled by a gotcha game. Oh, no. <laughs> what can I do? I can't pull... <laughs> I, can't, I can't pull for um, Paul or something <laughs> because now... I spend all my money on another version of Benny Maru. It's like, come on. We can't all be this dumb, right? <laughs> we can't. We can't actually be... <laughs> Uh, the suckers that they think we are. Also, I checked the YouTube questions. Um, there is none because it was a uh, <laughs> that was our the our, during our Yoda discussion, so there was no need for questions. We had oh. answered them all. All right, that's fair. Is I also want to say that I like that we had that George Lucas discussion before the blow up of Baby Yoda. I think we were trendsetters on that one, Zen. Yeah, <laughs> we, we did. We really uh really beat the mold on that one. Yeah. Imagine how different that episode would be in the different context. The post Baby Yoda world. Oh, you can't imagine it. Can't imagine. It. You should check out uh, the uh, concession stand on Jaws. By the way, if you haven't, it's probably one of the greatest things we recorded this year. It's really good. <laughs> it's really good. It's really good. And also, while you're doing that, check out uh, the King of Fighters, of course. Um, 
All right, let's get into the questions. First question comes from Spicy Memes 101, who asks, who again, this was asked back in November 5th, will you be playing Orc 2 I, 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 the, the I emojis, a whole bunch. Um, I think you've already said no, but that's also because the game is such in an early state that nobody knows what the fuck they're doing. Oh, so here's my story of Or 2, right? So uh-huh. I got it. Um, I used up all the stuff they gave me. I got gone, and I was like, okay, <laughs> great. Uh, and I played a little bit, and I was like, man, this seems like it would be only marginally fun even if I knew what was going on. And I had no idea what was going on. So I decided I was just going to back off and let people kind of figure it out. Mm-hmm. And then people started figuring it out, but I don't want to go back in and have to deal with these LR pull rates for five stars. So it's just not happening. I, I, so I'm currently playing or two. I think currently if I were to rank the gotchas I'm playing, number one would be uh, Dragalia Lost. Number two would be uh, World uh, No. It would be One Piece Bounty Rush. I have to be honest with myself. It's One Piece Bounty Rush. Three is World Flippers. And then four is Dokkan. And then somewhere near the bottom, as I go through the other one, Fate. And then at the bottom is uh, Or 2. Just because I have no idea what the fuck's going on. And it's really annoying to pull stuff. I don't understand why they decided that, like... Okay, so... I don't know. Obviously, I'm in a different state. Uh, here's my experience with Or 2. I started with 4,000 orbs. Because I kept my original Aura account. And I have about like 1,000 fucking tickets coming into me. And the idea of doing 1,000 single pulls is maybe the least exciting thing I could ever think of. Especially, yeah, I don't understand why you can't you can't even do multis with orbs. Because like oh. I had the, you know, the default. Because for some reason they only give you 50 of the tickets at a time. Instead of just giving them to you all at once. Yep. Because they um, uh, they wanted to some people saying are is it like server server boost or something? I think the real reason is is they don't want to give one thousand and then have PvP basically be invalidated for everyone who's starting new. I don't know because the five star pull rates are like fucking bad percent or whatever. It, um, it's... I think it's just because and they don't want you to come in and vomit all your stuff and then stop. Yeah, there's that too. It's um, just like here's the crazy thing. Uh, there are multi summons, but only for friend pulls. So bad and dumb. Yeah. So they were like, you know what? You know, it'd be really annoying if we made people single summon for garbage. And then I'm looking at that going, motherfucker, your rates are that I mostly get threes and I'm summoning garbage regardless. What is wrong with you? Like, I, it, like every character can go five star, but mm-hmm. unlike the original or it's a five star. So, like, you can't get a three-star, you know, Jotaro or whatever and yeah. then build him up. You have to get him at the zero-point hell rate. And I'm just not prepared to do that every time they drop a new character. Also, I... I list- every banner, and they're like, ha fuck you. And this was recently revealed to me. Um, so, you know how the, every there's every character can be every single element? And every single element does something different. Because uh, I've been wondering, like, I've been waiting for OCHD to post up the translations. And they put one up for Goku. And that fucking Goku has different passive skills for every single element that he is. And it's like, I I don't understand why the game is like this. Imagine pulling a five star against all odds and getting Mm -hmm. the worst one of the three possible versions of that five star. Yes, it's it's kind of like mind boggling. But here's the currently, I don't know how or collection there. Here's the one thing I actually do know is or collection two, for the most part, seems to be doing better than or one was because it actually was able to meet its Twitter rewards uh, retweets. (laughs) And it was also able to actually for the first time in its life saying, hey, um, if we get more. Uh, we'll give more bonuses. And then they reached those bonuses. And I was just like, where was this support for fucking Or 1? I got the monkey paws wish in terms of the support for this game. Um, I'm going to keep with it. Just because the idea of like if people are actually sticking with it, I hope that they make changes. Or 1 at start was different from where it ended. So I'm hoping that it can improve. The number one improvement would automatically be make your box space like over 1,000 and then say like, hey... Here you go. Like, I don't understand why they decided to keep all the trash next to the actual units. It doesn't make any sense. Um, but I am playing it. But also, it's really annoying because now there's story and now there's no skip button. 
So I don't know what anyone's saying. I don't know why Kill was talking to uh, Yusuke, but I don't care because I don't know Japanese. But there's they, no. They sk- make you like click buttons sometimes in the yeah. story mode, but there's only one option. So it's not like they're giving you a dialogue option. They're just making you click a button that says yes. Yes, like I have agency in this story. I guess. Um, these are all qualms, and it also doesn't help that, like, literally World Flippers came out around the same time, and World Flippers is the exact opposite in terms of, uh, user understanding, where it's like, uh, World Flippers is so ahead of the time, but it's also made by Psy Games, where it's, like, literally, like, it's got stuff like, um, when you complete a mission, it just automatically gives you the rewards, and it's like, oh, wait, I don't have to go back to the main menu, stop what I'm doing, and click on every... I click on the accept all. They were just like, what if we just accepted it all for you? Because there's no one in the world that actually is like, hmm, maybe I won't accept this at all. <laughs> you know? I've never thought about it. But yeah, a lot of gacha games make you go into the mission statement, and then I have to go click onto the missions and go like, yes, I give me my one dragon stone. Thank you. And for the first time ever, I was fun. like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why people just don't automatically accept it. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, I'm still playing or two. I'll see how it goes. Um, the re- people, I'll tell you right now, uh, the or two summon video I did is on par with my Dragalia loss. So there is definitely want to see it. The problem is, is that I don't know. I don't read Japanese, dude. I don't know what the fuck's going on. I just have Kinshiro and Vegeta in the same team and hoping for the best. <laughs> and that's about it. Um, so yeah. There's a, there you go, or two. I hope it continues doing good. And also, God, I feel sorry for OCHD having to translate everyone. He literally just has done one Goku so far. Because <laughs> I'm also going to assume he did not assume to be bum-rushed with the idea of, like, every unit being different. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, it's a whole thing, man. Yeah. So we'll see. I don't. Uh, yeah, hopefully it gets better. I, I'm not too yeah. into it right now. But yeah. I'm not against coming back to it if it gets good. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, thank you for the question, Spicy Memes, and also keep up uh, doing your work. I hope you're uh, the, the Reddit that you run. <laughs> I think I actually recently visited, uh, so if people don't know, Spicy Memes runs the um, um, the Orc Collection uh, Reddit, the number one. And I think someone in the question was like, so are you preparing for uh, the launch of Orc Collection 2 Reddit? And I think he, uh, the answer was, nah, we're just going to change it. And it's like, yeah, that's what the fucking game did. <laughs> Why can't the Reddit do it too? Yeah yeah uh so good luck with that uh next question comes in from tayshawn who says do you think pvp would work in dragalia um i have no idea because there's iframes in every skill you do so every pvp match would be like oh i'm using my skill and then (laughs) i would be no you're not i'm using my skill and then it would turn into a thing like well now we've both wasted our skills and now we're back to just kind of slapping each other in the face um I don't know. I don't think PvP would work in Dragalia as it sets up now. I think if you wanted to do PvP in Dragalia, you'd have to make like a turn-based mode or something. Yeah. I like could... you'd have to change how the game works. Yeah, kind of fundamentally, I think. Um, Not to say you can't do PvP like that, because I want to say there is another game that plays exactly like that, that has PvP, but it just doesn't seem fun. Mm. It just seems like run away until the enemy comes close to you and then hit them with one of your skills. Mm. It could be like, I think if they did a capture the flag style thing, where it's like certain points you have to defend or, ca- you know, wait until this certain that amount of time. Cool. Yeah. It just can't, it just can't be ahead with invis- invisible attacks. Like, yeah. you just can't be doing that. And then uh, you run into the unfortunate situation of like, oh, this person has Gala Cleo and I don't. I lose. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that too. Yeah, uh, I was about to say the 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 super Vegito of um, Dragalia is Gala Cleo, who currently is in such a high enough rank. It's unfair to compare her to any any other unit because that's like comparing um, a full course meal to a literal trash can at that point in terms of like just how different the disparity in power is. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. Next question comes in from Nighthawk, who asks, What unit would you like to see in a Dragalia in a crossover with Dokkan and vice versa? Also, where is Soul Link? And he has a crying Pikachu. He's been waiting three weeks saying, Where's Soul Link? And the answer is, Zed has Soul Link. I'm almost about to say, Zed, maybe you should just upload Soul Link to your channel. And we'll just. Oh, I forgot that I have that. I totally have that footage. You do. 
I keep forgetting that. I swear to God, I keep forgetting I have that footage. You do. It's funny. I th- we keep reminding you every time we've done two V release. Uh, one day, me, I keep forgetting. One day, part three is gonna drop, and you're gonna see uh, some amazing stuff. You know, I'm not gonna say who was lost, but someone definitely lost a Pokemon in that Soul oh Link. God, run. there is a death in that episode. Too. There's, there is like a death. Months. I still think that you're you're stalling because I'm so ahead of you because I had someone with teleport, so I'm just super far ahead of you. Uh, all right. So oh let's see if Dragalia crossed over with Dokkan, um, it'd probably be Goku, right? <laughs> it, the funny thing is, well, it can't be Goku because we already have Monkey King and Dragalia. Uh, he's a full-on like person, and chances are, with the way that they've been treating um, some other characters, Monkey King would be would have the ability to turn into the Astral Raid form of the dragon or something. Um, Bulma, Bulma would be cool, where she like uh, it's Bulma with a fucking gun, so she's yeah, just, just just gun Bulma. Yeah, she she can uh, she can. Uh, they already have the animations for um, Mega Man, so they may as well just. Um, put real bullets instead of the little mega bullet she does and she can be a caster or something i think it'd have to be from original dragon ball just because i think the second you get into like um the other dudes um it kind of gets hard maybe if you oh you know actually now that i think about it more because mega man kind of gets rushed jet and kind of stays small so the idea of like you get goku and then you turn super saiyan or something for your dragon so you just turn uh super saiyan and you just fucking fuck up everyone in your path ah that would be awesome it would be 100 percent awesome i won't deny that uh that's kind of huh i'll say that's that's what i would like something like that that or like kid gohan who's like but like baby kid gohan so he's like uh oh no not baby it'd have to be specifically from when he's gonna go fight vegeta so you could turn big ape the ozaru form you know you know what i'm talking about giant monkey in <laughs> big form that's the dragon angry monkey form exactly you could do the fucking oh the skill would be throwing a rock so a giant rock would show up out of nowhere and you would throw it and then when you G transform, a little Piccolo shows up and destroys the moon. <laughs> and he blows up the moon, and you you sink back down. Oh, that'd be great. Uh, how do you feel? Who do you think would you would like to see? Uh, from a, a Dokkan crossover. Yeah. Ninja Murasaki. <laughs> <laughs> um. I want uh future trunks giant spirit bomb sword Ooh. and every time you turn dragon you have to fucking listen to him give that speech <laughs> so oh that'd be so <laughs> good it'd single be, time it'd be the longest skill it'd be longer than elizabeth's like uh fucking crazy flurry knife dance it would be so long it's just him floating there as he floats up into the spirit bomb uh, and then be... his dragon form is just his sword is bigger. <laughs> it's all exactly the same. <laughs> it's just a really big ass sword. <laughs> Instead of a dragon, it's him normal size, and then the sword is the size of a dragon. Oh, that'd be great because then he has to run with it too. So he has yeah. like this tiny little run it's animation. Him. Yeah. Ah, uh, that'd be great. And then, because uh, this also said vice versa, who would I want in Dragalia in Dokkan? It'd have to be the big three. It'd have to be Ellie, Mim, and uh, Cleo. <laughs> It'd have to be them. <laughs> That's fair. Maybe you could put out an R, uh, a, a, an R Ranzel, <laughs> just for the fun of it, I guess. Just to have Ranzel in there. Yeah, not not Luca, though. Luca does not make it. Not until he gets his gala. <laughs> Currently, the last person to not get his gala is Luca. Oh, poor Luca. <laughs> struggling struggling hard luca fans out here are trying so hard they, they're, the luca the liquid the luca discourse in dragalia is hard because the luca fans have uh started to turn on dragalia because every little bit of luca that they get now when they got summer luca that was like that was the only time they ever ate in the entire year of luca <laughs> so if you're a fan <laughs> of luca uh, I want to say the that the starving in these streets. Yes, like the best uh, Luca art to come from Dragalia came from his fucking stalker, who his stalker has better art for Luca than actual Luca does. <laughs> and it was getting to the point where if you actually look up Twitter, anytime a Gala unit came out or like a new unit came out, and it was like a 
um, an alt of uh, Ellie, Mim, or Cleo, people would be like, oh, great, another Ellie, but where's my boy Luca? <laughs> there are other units, Dragalia. <laughs> Once again, That's snub. Not true. Ellie is the only one that matters. <sighs> Gala Ellie currently. No, her banner's gone. <laughs> She's only She was only here for three days. And I got her. Liberation banner? Yeah, yeah. Um, Gala Ellie, very good. Uh, extremely good not uh gala cleo terms of good but that doesn't mean anything no one's that good <laughs> so busted yeah i would love it if the those three showed up in dokkan and of course the r ranzel or no actually an ssr ranzel but he's the free to play i think that's fair give him an easy a <laughs> get him an easy a immediately i guess is the idea <laughs> uh, yes also this is a side tangent isn't it crazy that uh easy a free to play characters um that the it's crazy one because i think dokkan has missed the point of easy A's, which is turning a uh kind of subpar bad unit or an old unit good you can't make a bad unit and then say wait for the easy a like that doesn't make any sense yeah i don't know they they went from easy a being like it's a new buff to just being like we're just gonna drop a unit and it's gonna get it and good luck it's weird whatever it it ends up being fine because the easy a units are for the most part good uh except for the ones that have to be unfortunately easy a area rip in peace i'll never get those because fuck that i'm not about that life nope not that dedicated to the cause sorry uh next question comes in from shade who asks how good is cooler on a little boy scale so (laughs) let's uh let's step away from a big boy scale what about a little boy scale? How does Cooler rank? Uh, I don't. I'm not comfortable answering that question on the air. Mm. I don't need the FBI showing up. <laughs> All right, we under the laws of the U.S. cannot answer that question for you. I'm sorry. So you'll have to wait to to know the answer to that one. Sorry, Shade. Next question comes in from Most Creative Name, who asked, "Can you theorize what's next after the category meta, either seriously or jokingly?" <laughs> I think that's one in the same for us. I don't think there's a yeah, dude. I don't know what comes at cat. They're kind of like pigeonholed into categories. There's no escaping. Yeah, you, I mean, you can't. I don't see how you could uh, just bigger numbers in categories. Like I don't see how you could possibly switch to something different at this point. Yeah, unless they start making um, leader skills that are like, hey, also. Uh, fifty percent chance for anyone in this category to also get a crit or something like that, like additional attacks. That, other than that, I don't see there being a way to um actually improve the meta because it 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 is this and we're we're in this. Like all gotchas have eventually figured out. What if we just categorized all units and put them into something? Uh, I, I mean, what else are they gonna do? You, yeah. There's nothing else to do. No, unfortunately. Just like all things, Dokkan peaked when uh, Super Vegito was released. <laughs> when we had the God meta. As yeah, pretty much. That's it. You know what's great about um, God meta? This is going back in time. Um, remember when we had the growing pains getting out of God meta when the, the new gods came out? And uh, <laughs> and then you, as the creator of the name God Meta, had to fight people going like, well, now we need a new name. And you're like, no, God was supposed to mean specifically these are the five best units or something. And now that there's... Uh, oh, yeah, when everyone was like, okay, now it's Neo God, and now it's yeah. Ultra God. And I'm like, you don't understand. It's not a classification of what individual units are. It's just meant to be whoever's the best at the time. Yes, and people were like, no... We like to keep these referring as gods, and these are our new gods. <laughs> it's like, no, damn it. This- and then they're like, yeah, and then demigods. And I was like, oh. okay, <laughs> I have to leave. Yeah, you, you I lost. I can't the- have this conversation you, anymore. You lost the narrative at demigod, unfortunately, when we, we were unable to stop uh, Golden Cooler from. Uh, Golden Cooler. Uh, Golden Frieza for being called a uh, uh, demigod. That's when we lost all hope in terms of na- naming categories. Yeah. <sighs> But it yeah, was a, a fucking mess. It was. A beautiful mess. And now we have the mess as we go now. Crazy stuff. All right. Yeah, that's basically our answer for this category. It's like, I don't know, dude. They just literally made, I don't know, let's seek Goku. Like, we may as well do start doing categories where it's like, 
I don't know, this person looked at someone cross-eyed once. <laughs> like, that's the category. All characters who were at one point... Uh, oh, no, lost a limb. There you go. The next category is lost a limb. Any character who has ever at one point lost a piece of their body part <laughs> is allowed to be on here. And the best part is future Gohan will not be in it because <laughs> they... hands in the game. He has both the arms in the game, so... He will never be in it. Oh, I love categorization. I love it when people do that. I love the small argument everyone had when it was like, oh, yeah, Vegeta shouldn't be in future for Legends. And it became a fighting argument of like, but he's a part of the arc. And it's like, well, it's not called the future arc uh, category. It's called the future. It's like, that. that's dumb. Why is there a distinction between the two? Um and it turns into it's because the category in the category in Legends is an equal levels of dumb to Dokkan. A different kind of dumb, but still kind of dumb. Because uh, they also do things like Super Saiyan 1 and Super Saiyan 2 and Super Saiyan 3 and Super Saiyan God. And all of those are in separate categories. So Super Saiyan 1 boost will not boost up anything else. It's fun. <sighs> Next question comes in from Meg, who says... What are some childhood games you want to get either a sequel or an HD remaster? Uh, I'm already getting Final Fantasy VII, so... Yeah, that's yours, right? Uh, Not too much. I would love an HD, an HD remake, keep all the systems of the original Paper Mario. So, Paper Mario, but the paper just looks better. That's basically all I want. <laughs> Uh, just just prettier paper yes and then i also want you know how some games have the um the ability to switch out of how your graphics look like i want a button for paper mario that takes it from like super clean paper back to the old kind of dungy paper that was in the first original paper mario (laughs) i think that'd be great i'd love that other than that yeah i don't want a sequel to paper mario because the nintendo has shown that they don't understand what makes a paper mario game good uh, in recent years, so can't trust them with that. So just an HD remake would be perfectly fine with me. And you're getting Final That's Fantasy. So. so we all yeah, win. I'm already getting Final Fantasy. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna poke the hornet's nest on that. I'm already getting Final Fantasy VII. So like, you've technically had every remaster you would want because you got the the Sonic Mania, which is in essence a good sequel to the original Sonic. You're getting Final Fantasy VII. You got remasters of Spyro, a fucking Spyro, something I did not expect. You basically already got everything you would want. Yeah, if I get Legend of Dragoon at this point, I'm gonna start going to the lottery because clearly that's everything. Things are working out for me. Fair point. Uh, next question comes in from Santa Hat Comey, who says, do you think Zenrado should take some swimming lessons since he can't swim? What if there's a giant puddle next to his house and he might drown? <laughs> Is it true you can't swim? I cannot swim. <laughs> I love the idea of you just going like, uh, <laughs> there's a giant puddle outside your house and you go to, uh, your significant other and just going, I can't go out to work today. There's a big ass puddle. What am I supposed to do? I can't. Yeah, I can't. Or I just trip and fall in, and that's just it. <laughs> that's it. You're like that um one episode of uh, Family Guy where Peter drowned in water in soup when he was wearing water wings. <laughs> that's you in a constant basis. <laughs> uh, I could teach you how to swim. Probably, I'm not the best swimmer, but if you ever if you want to pay for me to go out there, I'll teach you how to swim. <laughs> It's simple. You just start <laughs> kicking like crazy and hope that you never <laughs> run out of uh, steam. That you don't go under. Yeah. I can't teach you how to breathe underwater because I never learned how to breathe without holding my nose. So you're kind of screwed on that department, but I can teach you how to at least survive in water. Uh, <laughs> All right. you. When we do our Donkey Kong Country stream, we'll also do a teaching me how to swim stream. Oh, that would be great. Could you imagine? Let's actually start a um, GoFundMe for this idea, by the way. Do, <laughs> you should calculate how much money we would need for, one, for me to go to where you live, to find lodging for the time being uh, for a certain amount, and then also my trip back, stuff like that. And then we'll see if we can actually uh, fund me going to you. And we'll start like I'll a- that shit. Yeah, well, we'll we'll go out there and say, like, fund this idea of me going all the way across the country um, for a bit just to play some Donkey... To stream all... Donkey Kong Country. Yes. 
Now, will we beat it? Probably. I don't think we'll beat Donkey Kong Country 1, just because I feel like we'll stream Donkey Kong Country for as long as we feel. And then we'll move on to Donkey Kong Country 2, because that's the one game where it's like, we're going to need some actual time. We can't burn all our time on Donkey Kong Country Run, because Con- Donkey Kong Country 2 is a fucker. <laughs> and we... And... Yeah, Donkey Kong Country 2 is a serious piece of shit. It is. Uh, I was talking to uh, one of the Foco founders for Trash Alliance Lerp, and I think Donkey Kong Country 2 has the the carnival level where it goes into the B boss is maybe the, one of the most fucked up things in all of games, <laughs> because I don't I don't mean uh, a piece of shit. The game sucks, by the way. I no. mean that it's really hard. It's insanely it's really hard. hard. Um, if you have not, it can be tough, but like Donkey Kong Country 2 is fucked. Yes, the, oh my God. the B boss is one insanely hard, and if you fuck up and go to the next area, which the next area is the ghost one, if you fuck up and don't save before you enter the ghost, you will start back and have to fight that fucking B all over again. Because in the ghost areas where that uh, the minecart level with the ghost that's constantly following you is, and that's I think where I've lost the most progress in any game because I would just literally like. I would um, lose all my lives right there. And that's why we would need to be able to have contingency plans to be able to beat Donkey Kong Country 2. <laughs> I will promise that much, at least, so that we will beat Donkey Kong Country 2, and then we will uh, see how far we can also get in Donkey Kong Country 3. Because that game also can eventually, near the end, gets kind of fucked up with some of its uh, levels. This is all great. Let's start that GoFundMe. Well, we'll, <laughs> we'll look around. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure out the prices of everything. We'll get back to you on that one. And yes, and then we will also I will also teach you how to swim while I'm over there. That way we'll okay. kill two birds with one stone. Um next question comes in from John. Given that the untitled duck game is on the Switch, how long do you think till we get the duck in Dragalia? <laughs> <laughs> it's a goose. Oh yeah, what the fuck? Duck, untitled duck dude. game. It is a it is a goose. <laughs> Uh, I mean, there's duck. I think duck game is on Switch, but we would want goose. We would want we would want the the iconic goose, <laughs> the icon of 2019, the goose. I oh, actually, want yes, a duck. Yeah, no, thank you, no ducks. Um, I think it's possible. Anything is apparently possible. You don't need to have a gotcha to be allowed in Dragalia. You just need to have some kind of pull in Nintendo Sphere. Uh, so yeah, let's do it. It exists apparently with Mega Man. Just yeah, be around. yeah, just kind of be around. I don't know what's up with uh, the deals behind Mega Man. I, I want to hear the tell-all story about what the hell happened with the Mega Man event because it feels like they had a different idea about what it was going to be, and then Capcom said no, and then I don't know what happened what uh, with uh, Mega Man at the end. It feels kind of crazy. Um, but we'll see. I'm wondering what the next crossover would actually be. Who knows? It could be literally anything. <laughs> Probably another Capcom thing. <laughs> While they're at it, because Capcom Probably. will cross over with just about anything, including itself, with like Teppin and stuff. So we'll see. Yeah, sure. Bring in the goose. I would love the goose to show up. He would be an adventurer, and all you would do would honk at people until they died, honk at dragons until they die. Untitled Dragalia crossover. <laughs> <laughs> Next question comes in from McCartan, who says, "What kind of villain would you like to see appear in Dragon Ball?" Um, I think it'd be very interesting if Goku fought Hannibal Lecter, uh, just because <laughs> the idea of fighting um an actual man for some reason. I don't know why Goku would fight Hannibal Lecter, but the idea of Goku having to outsmart a yeah a guy who's just like super into eating people. It's like, well, he's already in jail. What am I supposed to do? Hanna- only Hannibal Lecter knows the location of the Dragon Balls, and he keeps asking me weird questions about my childhood. I I can't really remember. I just kind of knocked my head out at some point. There you go. I don't think that was the question about what kind of villain would I want to see in Dragon Ball, but there you go. That's what I would say. Now, what about you, Zen? Uh, just more Johnny Young Bosch Broly. Mm, yeah i guess now that they have a broly they can definitely bring back broly for something i guess whenever super returns depending on whatever rumor you hear about today is super returning he won't Uh, be a bad guy but still mm, yeah that's true i don't know how to deal with 
I don't know what what's up with the deal, Burley. I still have not seen that movie. I'll see it at some point. Um, I still have my biases against Broly, but apparently it looks very nice, so I can see that at least. Uh, what uh, this question comes in from Matt, who says, "What new modes do you want to see in Dragalia?" Hmm, I don't know. I'll. I'm kind of okay with the game as is. Um, I don't know what like new mode I'd want to play where specifically it would still play the way it does. You know what I mean? Other than that PvP thing we talked about, that would be pretty cool with a capture the flag type of thing. Other than that, I don't know. Uh, what do you feel? That one back to me? Um, what new modes do you want in Dragalia? Modes? Um... A card game mode. Oh, Where it's just be... cards of all the people that you're... Like, you can play it with your worm prints or something. Oh, that'd be awesome. Especially since all the rim- worm print art is amazing. Yeah, dude, the worm prints are good. Oh, they're real just, good. They're real good. So I would love to see all those turn into a card game. Then then make that a mode for Dragalia going forward. And then eventually it gets so big that they have to split it off because it's too big. It becomes its own thing. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of old Dokkan, do you remember when people thought Battlefield was going to be replacing Dokkan? I didn't. You remember that so much for that, huh? Yeah. So many people were like, it's so different. I don't know what's going on here. Obviously, they're going to spin it off into its own game. I don't like this. I don't know where this is going. And then the answer was, uh, this was a failed experiment. Goodbye. <laughs> and it never happened. Out. Okay, later. See ya. Man. Of all the chicken little prophecies that ever never came forward, that one's probably the biggest. <laughs> um... Next question comes in from, oh, I, I accidentally skipped one. Um, Zorark Master Twenty Six, who says, "How would you use Giorno in Part Six, or how would you use Josuke in Part five, if at all?" Mm. Uh, well, Josuke would just save everyone in Part Five because it's impossible to die if Josuke is there, basically, uh, unless you get like one shot before mm. anyone can do anything. But then again, Giorno could heal anyway, so who needs Josuke? <laughs> It would just turn into that uh, that Metapod Harden battle. Actually, that's what I want out of it. Or want... Harden, Giorno, use Harden. <laughs> just get use Harden, and so it's both of them just standing in the middle, not doing anything. <laughs> and... uh, that would be a fun way of using it in Part Five. If the idea of like he comes in and like literally nothing is progress, and then eventually they all just get away. It's like all right. Uh, we need to avoid this guy, and then he goes, I don't know who the hell those people were, and then he goes back to doing whatever the hell he was doing in Italy. Because I don't know what the hell he would be doing in Italy by himself. Yeah, just out in Italy. Not really a thing. No. I actually can't imagine him by himself in Italy. I actually can't imagine him living anywhere but his tiny little town. Yeah. (laughs) You would just fight too many people who would argue that his hair sucked, and then it'd be like, well, he's killed half of Italy now. I don't know how that happened. Well, he's gravely injured half of Italy, so... He wouldn't kill them. He would just, like, turn them into books and shit. Exactly. And as far as Giorno in Part 6, I don't know, I just kind of show that he's there. I would actually love to see a um just his reaction from when the thing happens in Part 6. That would be enough for me. Just because I think the one thing that people kind of get hung up on not hung up on but it's just kind of the idea like how would these two things react to each other just because it's like well giorno has this one power and this other thing has this completely other power but then how do the two powers interact that's basically all um i would be interested in seeing is just like how would these two things kind of like collide against each other other than that that's basically it for me i like all the fan comics where it's like oh god we're about to lose and then Giorno just fucking shows up and bodies the shit out of him yeah <laughs> that's basically what would happen you can't beat Giorno in a fight you either lose or you tie those are the only options yes which is probably why he's not in part six in a fighting capacity yeah because if you everyone's always like why didn't they just call Giorno but like because there wouldn't be a plot if they did there wouldn't mm-hmm. be a story. 
Jordan would go, oh, okay, let me just deal with this then quickly. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite instances of a character so strong that they don't, that people would say, how come they didn't just end the conflict was, I think, in the No Man's Land run of Batman. Um, Gotham was basically turned into a No Man's Land. It was put under, like, it was basically being, it was in a crazy situation where, like, basically anarchy had fallen into Gotham. And uh, and they answered the question, how come uh, Superman didn't just show up and save everything? He tries. He shows up and he tries to help out. And then he learns that the second he helped out, um, it didn't help anything. It actually, everything he did was basically like um, he would try and help someone and then he would end up making something worse. And I think it, the comic ends with him going, I did not understand the political stances of everything that was going on here. This is way above my grade. <laughs> I'm a Boy Scout. <laughs> Ah. where he was basically saying like i don't know how this place is run i am literally showing up to a place where i don't understand if who i'm helping is actually helping anyone because what if what i'm helping is doing things worse Eh, fuck it i'll let it go to batman (laughs) and he goes away from gotham because he's just like i don't know what's going on here man i don't i don't fucking know (laughs) this is terrible (laughs) and i thought that was like that except jorno would fix everything and then the plot would be like okay and, and then it's over. Yeah, and then... And they live happily ever after. Cut to um, Rodney Dangerfield saying, we're all getting laid, and then the, 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 <laughs> the part ends. Because Gold Experience Requiem couldn't, like, negate the time speed-up thing. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter, because he still couldn't... He would just beat him in a fight. So what difference does it make? Yeah, basically. Remember in part four, when all the villains were like, okay... I want to do villain stuff, but I really don't want to fuck with Jotaro, so I need to figure out how to make it so that I don't have to fight Jotaro. It'd yes. be like that, except he would actually win. So, yeah, yeah, it's it's uh it's tough. <laughs> he definitely was. He realized that there was an issue, and the issue was I can't put this man into the story because then there is no story. <laughs> yeah, you can't give him the ultimate power and then just throw him in the rest of your stories whenever you want. Exactly. Because then he literally, he stops being a character. He becomes a deus ex machina. A guy who literally shows up out of nowhere. All right. Thank you for the question. Next question comes in from Blue, who asked the very simple question. Did you like Dragon Ball Super? That's fine. Uh, I've, again, I've only seen uh, a couple episodes. I th- Not a couple, because I, I keep forgetting that a couple means two. I've seen Sun episodes um the Aureli episode fantastic and then starting from tournament of power where i think there was only like seven dudes left <laughs> that's when i started that skipped all of um goku black stuff i got to see people's reaction to goku black which was uh if sometimes fun sometimes just infuriating in terms of just like um seeing people be like oh time travel because i knew eventually it would turn into that i knew from the start it would eventually turn into people arguing about time travel but it didn't start that way. <laughs> and I was like, well, it seems pretty good so far. And then somewhere near the end of it, people started um, getting crazy about it. And I guess I thank God that I wasn't on Twitter at that time when that kind of shit was going on. I, I feel like I like basically anything Dragon Ball. If the character designs are good. Like, I love Dragon Ball Heroes and everyone mm-hmm. talks, shit, talks shit about that. Um, like GT that I don't like because they're fucking ugly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could definitely see that. I don't know. I don't know what I want Dragon Ball to be. I just want Dragon Ball. So I'm not going to pretend to know what I want. (laughs) So I can't really help them improve anything. I don't have any valid criticism. Like when people go like, oh, how come they don't use a supporting cast? I just kind of go, yeah. Dragon Ball's never really been that kind of thing, though, to me. Like even in original Dragon Ball, does no one remember when... Um, literally every character was like, we got to go help Goku fight the red ribbon army. And then Goku said, I beat those guys already. And it's like, it's already over. <laughs> it's already over, dude. I stormed <laughs> the castle. <laughs> it's over. It's or like when King Piccolo showed up and literally everyone died and Goku was like, well, guess I'm going to, uh, get involved here and win. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> The the best thing about the King Piccolo stuff is when um, Toriyama accidentally made Yajirobe on par with Goku. <laughs> oh yeah, when Yaj- 
Like, Al Jordan was stronger than Goku right then, I feel like. Yes, he was. At that time, he was able to kill kill and eat one of uh, King Piccolo's uh, sons. Something that Goku wasn't able to do because, one, he doesn't eat him, but he also wasn't able to kill him. And then I think he immediately had the backfire. I was like, I think I made Yajirobe too strong. And since then, <laughs> Yajirobe has been kind of sucky. But when he debuted, he was actually extremely powerful. But it was only for those brief panels when he literally fought Kid Goku to a standstill. Sure. Um, so yeah, keep on Dragon Balling is what I'm saying. Uh, make new forms. I guess Goku, uh, I like Dragon Ball Super. It's fine. Uh, the characters that come from it are pretty good. The, um, art from it came pretty cool. And from the fights I've seen, it was well animated. So it's a win-win for me. It also is responsible for my highest tweet to ever done, which was the Android 17 boat one. (laughs) So that's a good tweet. It was. Stolen by Ace Media. Oh, yeah, that's right. That was fun. Um, that wasn't fun, but... <laughs> and we're like, I can't believe you stole this from Maystar Media. Yeah, and then... And we were like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, and then the f- the first person to actually leap towards it was Toast, because I guess the, the very idea of me stealing from anyone was so ab- abhorrent to him that he was like, excuse me, I need to stop shitting on whatever I'm shitting on right now. Who the fuck do you think you are? <laughs> really mad at that guy. <laughs> It was great. It was a it was a fantastic time. It was my number. It was my best tweet. Uh, a lot of my a lot of my friends came out to defend me to say like I don't know who the who you think you are. I I even like was the most polite to that guy because I was like, hey, here's my actual premiere like workspace where I actually legitimately made you this. Can literally, just check the timestamp because the tweet was like a full day before the the video yeah. that had it in it. It was great. Is Master Media still a thing? By the way. Yeah, he's still tracing art and doing that okay. whole thing. Great, great, to, great to hear that. I'm not here to start any beef, so don't. Uh, you guys can start beef on your own. <laughs> I don't. I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> he does uh, weird, shitty things, but I'm not here to fight. I'm just here to state facts. Uh, the next question comes in from Quabofalu two fifty two, who says, "How was your day? Uh, how was your day, Zen? Let's start with you." Long. Mm, I feel that. Mine is also long because I still have to go to work after this. That sucks. I have yes. to teach a train class to work. Too. Oh, that sucks too. That all. I hate having to train the incoming classes because they're just not good. Mm, I'm also training someone. It's just kind of annoying. I don't like training people. I'm not very good at training because I'm kind of bad at explaining things. And my work does not make it easier for me. So I don't like it at all me it's like i teach computers and i'm teaching it to like primarily young people so it's like well, why are you not getting this you're not old enough to technology i'm trying to teach an older person to write down and it's been i've been trying to do this for three times three days now uh three days as in three work days of whenever i was working and you'd think on day one you'd be able to figure out like hey start writing at this point when we say start writing he has not figured it out yet. And he's a nice enough guy that I don't want to shit on him. Um, because obviously he's starting out. But also, it's just writing down. It's everything else he's great at. It's just literally the writing down part that he doesn't understand. Jesus. Well. <laughs> can't help it sometimes. Times. Tough times. Indeed. Writing is hard. Uh, I also had, uh, in terms of gotcha pulls, I was able to get an insanely good pull on bounty rush i got what was in essence to dokkan festival guys in one multi which is pretty yeah. fucking rare uh and they were both extremely good units so i was like hell yeah <laughs> this works out great for me i can't hate on that yeah uh but yeah going through it uh Yes, I've been trying to. I've been doing this recently just because I've been trying to figure out the best things to do with my channel. And sometimes I do things in my channel where I'm like, um, this was a good idea when I thought of it. And now I'm doing it and I'm like, I forgot that this is a lot of work. <laughs> this is a more work that I'm used to. <laughs> I'm I'm playing through the Salem chapter and, and Fate. And it's uh, the best thing I would put it up to is similar to how like you're reading um, Eyes Over Heaven, the, the Dio uh, book for your channel. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Except for I'm doing it daily, so I have to release these videos daily, and also if I only release these videos, my channel would <laughs> suffer. So I'm also doing regular content uh, that I usually do along with this, and I was like, ah, oh, shit, I'm actually not in a great situation to double record, because I've only Oh, added... yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a problem. Yeah, and most of my window for recording is about an hour, because then it takes me an hour to actually upload everything and put stuff with it, and then I also have my own work to do, and I have other side work that I have to do. So I was like, oh, this was a great idea when I started it, and this is something where I'm like, well, I've started it. I'm going to finish this, damn it, <laughs> regardless of anything. But it's a pain in the butt. Making content's hard, dude. I don't know I don't know if you've yeah. heard this, <laughs> but it's tough. It, it is tough. And that's our, that's a, thank you for the question, uh, Quifoble. I cannot pronounce your name. I'm sorry. And the last question comes in from uh, Zayed, who says, how would you make Dokkan more interesting for you? New mechanics, actual new game modes, like the OG battle. No, not like that. We can both agree that no battlefield, nothing like battlefield. Oh, no battlefield. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to make Dokkan more interesting as someone who doesn't also constantly make dokkan stuff um dokkan is like i think the most ignored game i've ever gotcha game that i constantly still play because i feel like it's the only game where i can ignore it for a month come back for like three days and it's perfectly fine and then go back to ignoring it yeah <laughs> yeah you really can yeah like even now as someone who's pulled a whole bunch of lrs it's like Oh, but I have to farm these fucking dumb metals. And there's no auto button because Dokkan needs an... There you go. Add auto mode to Dokkan and I will play it way more. Because there's some fights I just literally don't want to fight. And um, the idea of, like, I have to give my attention to something that requires no part of me to actually, like, play it is kind of weird. Um, so there you go. My idea is add auto mode to Dokkan. <laughs> I'll co-sign that. Auto mode would be nice. Yeah. And with that, that's every question we got. And that's an episode of TB Release Zen. Oh, man. And an hour long, too. We made it. The books after a very long time. Yes, yes. So uh, I don't know when the next one will be released. I'll try for a week. But, you know, it's us. So <laughs> don't don't expect it any time. <laughs> yeah, me and Zen are both uh, busy with our own things now. <laughs> How times have changed. We never thought we'd see the day where both of us would be so busy that we can't stop for a bit to record something. But here we are. We both are now that. We've become... It is um, life. It is life. But it's okay. Because you're when you're when we're not together, you're out there winning the big Teppin bucks. And when I'm not out there, I'm out there reading manga. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. When That's important. I'm also doing that, so... Oh yeah, we're both reading manga back and forth, so it ends up perfectly fine. But you're at least, in theory, using your manga reading to fuel uh, another podcast. I'm just doing it for my enjoyment. (laughs) Yeah, that podcast is, like, impossible to coordinate, so... Oh yeah, trust me. Trust me on that one. I know that. Oh, you know what I forgot to mention at the start? It's also crazy to think that also while we were gone, another Dokkan podcast started. The second Dokkan podcast to ever start. What? Uh, Goresh and Talons, and I forget the last person's name, so apologize for that. They had their their they have their own Dokkan podcast as well. Oh, that's right, man. Our, our our already niche audience is about to be gone. We're good. We're gonna lose them all. You know what we should do? We should try and take one of them. We should poach one of them and get so them on. Come, their... come on our show. It's... Yes, come on our show. Let's talk about the big boys. Uh, let's talk about big boys together. Let me show you what happened. Large large lads let me show you what happens when you've been recording for for dokkan for about three or four years <laughs> this is what eventually happens to you there's only so much you can say about a unit and talk about a meta before it all becomes gobbledygook in your mind yeah but uh best of luck to them you should check the you should check them out too if you want actual dokkan news and not interested just on the biggest boys possible <laughs> There's an alternative to the market, but it's fine because we're still going to be the number one Dokkan one because we are the only ones that are willing to keep releasing stuff. (laughs) We will keep putting big boys out there. Exactly. All right, Zen. It's time to end the episode. Do you remember how to end it? Cool.
Okay, I remember- I'm like 99% I do. Okay, remember to say that's no good when I finish up my thing. Okay, everyone, remember. Um, don't play Dokkan, because if you do play Dokkan, you go to hell before you die. That's no good. See you later, everybody. Bye.